Alameen, Asnaatu Assalamu ala Rasooli Al-Kareem, and uh, thank you, Mr. Zia, for uh, inviting me. Uh, this is an important topic, and today the webinar uh, we are conducting is a very important topic, ethics uh, and entrepreneurship in the light of uh, and ethics and, and, and entrepreneurship. We are we'll discuss this very uh, relevant topic in today's world. What are the basic guidelines uh, uh, for an entrepreneur if he or she wants to uh, conduct his business activity according to the principles of Islam and also within the bounds of ethics? So uh, I'll start the webinar with a small recitation from Holy Quran. Uh, I will start my presentation and I just uh, uh, want to set some rules that uh, you can ask your questions in the chat box and uh, if you have any query you can type your question and after the presentation and in, within the presentation I will also answer your queries and and then if they have, we have time uh, we will take some one-to-one uh, -one questions as well. So uh, use the chat box for your comments, for your queries, and for your uh, questions related to the topic. So I'm sure you, this presentation is visible to you. The topic, as I mentioned, is business ethics and entrepreneurship in the light of Islam, in Islam, or in the guide, in the rules, according to the rules of Islam. Why this topic is important? Uh, uh, today, we are living in an age where new business are coming up. People are very interested in uh, starting their own uh, businesses and setups. Uh, our young students and young generation is particularly interested in uh, starting their own businesses, becoming the boss of uh, you know their own bosses. We have uh, the fintech revolution coming up. Uh, the, the technology has uh, enabled uh, and uh, that many of us can now start business. We can start online business. We can, uh, you know, engage in some type of business activity. But uh, one important question, we need to address is that uh, how we make our business ethical, what are the rules that we need to follow? And as a result, we achieve a double bottom line, a profit in the business in this world, as well as we make our business an act of ibadah. So we, whatever we work for, whatever we, you know, we work hard for, it also make become a source of reward for us. So ये बहुत अहम topic है और बहुत अहम discussion है कि कैसे हम अपने businesses को करें, कैसे हम अपने entrepreneurship skills को इस्तेमाल करें और what are the boundaries, what are the rules for us uh, and in the light of Islamic law and in the light of the modern and best ethical practices. Now I'll start uh, with the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu that uh, it is re related by Abu Sa'id, uh, the Prophet peace be upon him said, the honest and trustworthy merchant will be with the prophets, the truthful and the martyrs. Ek amanatdar or satcha tajir jo hai, wo ambiya, siddiqeen or shuhada ke saath hoga. So this is the importance of an honest, and this is the you know rank of an honest businessman. एक सच्चा ताजिर एक अच्छा ताजिर जो बिल्कुल इस्लाम के हिसाब से और اخلاقیات के हिसाब से काम करता है तो ही और शी विल बी रिवॉर्डेड इन द बेस्ट पॉसिबल मैनर सो व्हाई नॉट वी मेक आवर बिजनेस आवर एंटरप्राइजेस आवर एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड अर्निंग प्रॉफिट इन इन सच अ मैनर कि हमें दोनों तरफ का फायदा हो दुनिया का भी फायदा और आखिरत का भी फायदा हो इसी बात को आगे बढ़ाते हैं नाउ एक सवाल आता है व्हाई आई शुड uh, engage myself in business activity. Iska, again, business trade involve hona, it's an occupation of the prophets. Aap sabko pata hoga, humare Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ka jo tha, wo He was truthful. He was uh, trustworthy. And he himself was involved in trading activity. He uh, entered in a, in a partnership with Hazrat Khadija Razila Tala. And that contract was known as Mudarba. So, the business act of business is also a sunnah of the prophets and especially our prophet peace be upon him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept barakat in this profession if you do it rightly and what what is meant by barakat 
your less become sufficient for you. It will be it. And your आपका थोड़ा सी आमदनी आपको ज़्यादा फ़ायदा दे. And in this is an important concept. And today, unfortunately, we are in a red race, and we have left this thing because we want to make more money than we can earn. We want to make maximum earning, but we have left this thing to forget how we are earning. How we are earning? How we are making money? 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 क्या हमारी एडवर्टाइजमेंट चाहिए क्या हमारी सब्जेक्ट मैटर की ट्रेड और जो हमारा तरीका है तजारत है द वे वी डू द बिजनेस इज इट इज इट ओके और नॉट सो वी नीड टू बी वेरी केयरफुल एंड वी नीड टू बी माइंडफुल ऑफ व्हाट व्हेन वी व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट दिस अच्छा इसी में बात आती है व्हाट कम्स टू द माइंड व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट द वर्ड और व्हेन वी लिसन टू द वर्ड एथिक्स द डिफरेंट इंटरप्रिटेशन टू दिस वर्ड एंड सम ऑफ Uh, some of our business colleagues says, "What is ethics? What ethics has to do with business? Ethics का क्या काम है इससे? ये पैसा कमाना है भाई पैसा जैसे भी कमाएं और ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा कमाना है और ये this the the capitalist theory also cement this uh, attitude कि जी wealth maximization is the is an is an is the is the motto of an organization or is the goal of an organization. So आप अपनी wealth को maximize करें बाकी सही है जैसे भी करें. But unfortunately, this attitude has become common people are you know uh, using right and wrong ways to maximize wealth nations are sometimes companies are exploiting other human beings other us pe experiment kar rahe hain usko usko kitna apni agar dawa bechni hai aapne to they are using human uh, as a as a as a experiment uh, you know guinea pig ke taur pe use kar rahe hain usko aap bas paisa kamane ki lalach mein log pad gaye और ये कहते हैं कि और ये हमें अनफॉर्चुनेटली जो कैपिटलिस्ट थ्योरी है उसने ये बात से और हमारे जहनों को मुतासर किया है कि जी वेल्थ मैक्सिमाइजेशन इज द ऑब्जेक्टिव एथिक्स इज समथिंग ऑप्शनल इवन व्हेन वी टॉक अबाउट अवर बिजनेस स्कूल्स द एटीट्यूड टुडे ऑफ अ यंग स्टूडेंट और इवन अ फैकल्टी मेंबर इज दैट एथिक्स इज एन ऑप्शनल सब्जेक्ट एथिक्स तो ऑप्शनल है आपको असल चीज क्या है बॉटम लाइन देखनी है बस पैसा कमाना है एथिकल होना या ना होना ये चॉइस है but not for a muslim ethics is is the integral part of a muslim uh, businessman ethics is a integral part of a person who is upright and moral iske baghair to guzara hi nahi hai aap agar ethical nahi hai to aap acche insaan hi nahi hai aap acche yani you are not a uh, useful member of the society aur agar aap kehte hain ki yes i i value ethics meri nazar mein ethics bahut important hai it is a very important uh, Uh, it's a it's a very important aspect then and then the question arises how i make my business and my job and my work ethical and according to islamic law so then if you if you think ethics is important you uh, being morally upright is uh, is important uh, being beneficial for the society is important uh, then the question will automatically arise that how will i how i make this happen now let's again come to islamic thought islam is a complete code of life uh, there is a small mistake in the presentation so uh, and and the quran says o you do o you who believe who had believe do not consume one another's wealth unjustly but only uh, in lawful business by mutual consent and do not kill yourselves or one another indeed allah is to you ever merciful so quran very clearly says that yes you can involve yourself in trade with mutual consent but do not take away others wealth unjustly and this word unjustly is a very, has a very broader meaning unjustly could be by deception by telling lie by you know mixing some impure impure element or milawat aapne kar di or uh, by just uh, wrongly uh, you know you know by misselling something so and there are lot of way, means of unjust even taking riba and interest is also unjust element you cannot you have no right to take another wealth of another person by way of interest so islam guide us that o oh believers do not consume one another wealth unjustly and have trade by mutual consent in a lawful manner and we are very fortunate that we have complete guideline for us Which, uh, which allow, or you know, we have complete, uh, you know, 
a code that is given to us by Islam and we follow that code of uh, ethics and code of uh, business, we can, uh, you know, we can convert our business activities which are within the, within the bound of ethics and Islamic law. Now, again, one, one important aspect is, is, a, is the aspect of finance when we talk about uh, businesses. And, uh, and, and our entrepreneurs are always worried about how to get finance, how to manage their finance, how to obtain finance, because uh, you know, you, we all know that uh, finance is an integral raw material or requirement for running any business. And let's see what Quran says about it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Baqarah says, and Allah has permitted trade and forbidden riba. It is, uh, for Allah has permitted trade and forbidden interest. So one of the basic pillar when you are starting up your business or your enterprise is that you, when, when I, and you are trying to arrange finance for your company or investment for your company, you need to be very sure that yes, trade is allowed and trade-based methods are allowed, but interest or riba or usury is, is impermissible. So this is not a, that, uh, this is not a starting point for us. We need to ensure that we, whenever we are getting finance, we have to had we have to obtain finance in a right manner. Now I'll I'll just build on it. When when Quran says trading is allowed, you can earn by way of trade. Uh, so what what are different types of trade that one even can involve uh, himself or herself? In order to earn profit, one is required to take risk in the business or a real asset. Hence, trading and business profits are allowed in Islam. However, interest-based loan or interest-based contract or interest-based earning is not allowed. So in the, in the permissible zone, in the zone of trade, sale-based businesses are allowed, like you are involved in a trading business, you are buying and selling something uh, which is permissible, you are buying a laptop and you're selling the laptop, you're buying mobile phone, you are, you are you know, buying you have a grocery store, you are buying items daily on a daily basis and, and you're selling those items. This is a permi permissible type of sale-based business and it is, if, if, huh, there, are, there are issues that you, whatever product you are buying and selling, it has to be ethical, it has to be halal, it has to be permissible. Then another form of uh, uh, trade that is allowed is partnership. You can enter into partnership based on your wealth or based on your skills uh, with, with another partner. And then you can jointly operate a business. Here, both partners share profits and also in, in, in case of Musharka, both partners invest money or uh, they, they invest and pool in, pool in their funds. And in case of Mudarba, one partner pulls in the funds and the other partner provides the services. So the classical example of Mutarba that I mentioned is that, say, let's say, I, uh, it was, it was the, it's, it's about the Prophet Sallallahu when he entered into a partnership contract with Hazrat Khadija Razila Dharana. So the Prophet Sallallahu was has the expertise of the business and Hazrat Khadija Razila Dharana was the investor in this business. And that, that trade caravan went to different countries and they, may, they, sell, some, they sell some goods and they earn profit. And when they returned, they shared the profit. So, so partnership is one is another form of trade and business where you can involve yourself, but you have to then follow principles of partnership. So, for example, I want to establish a software house. I have I have the computer science skills, and I but I don't have the finance. And my brother has one million rupees available for, as an investment, so I can do a partnership with my brother. And I can say, okay, let 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 us invest in a, in a, to establishing a software company. You put in money, so we will buy the equipment. I put my efforts, and whatever profit we will earn, we will share it at a 50-50 percent ratio and, or any other agreed ratio. Then rental earning is, is also permissible in Islam. So when Islam disallows uh, earning based on riba and other prohibited elements, Islam has provided as alternatives as well. So rental-based earning, like you can do a rent-a-car business, you can buy a shop and give it on rent, you can... Uh, you know, buy equipments and you can give it, give it on rent. Uh, there are like when we, where there's a function in our family, we normally go to uh, some uh, caterers and we rent out plates, uh, generators, chairs, tables. So rental business is also allowed. If, if, a, if, a, if a product is usable, it has a permissible use, 
then you can uh, you can also have a rental business. You can start that business and you can give your uh, commodity or of the product, especially which is which is a fixed asset type product on rent to someone. Also, in the area of services, again, service providing permissible services to someone uh, for a permissible uh, you know activity is also allowed. I am, if I'm a teacher, I can teach, I can give tuition, I can do freelance work, I can uh, do consultancy. I, if I'm a doctor, I can open my clinic, I'm a lawyer, I can give legal advice. So services are also allowed provided they are provided for a, for a permissible, uh, you, know, uh, you know, purpose. So services is a, is a doable thing. Yes, for each of these elements, inshallah we will discuss in the later slide as well, there are certain no-go areas as well. So for example, if I am a, if I am a uh, you know, a lawyer, and I know that uh, there is a person who is who has uh, stolen something, and he want me to prove that he is innocent in the eyes of law, that service is impermissible, because you are now providing services to actually uh, deceive someone. So. As a, as a broader category, services are permissible. Uh, similarly, you are a freelancer, but you you provide some services services that are not uh, uh, you know permissible. For example, uh, I say I am I am designing a poster for a uh, for a casino where they will uh, have gambling uh, you know machines and they they will be selling alcohol. So I'm I'm designing a very attractive pro brochure and a video for a casino, that type of service is also impermissible. But pr primarily, you have, you have you in, in, a, in order to enter in a trade, sale-based uh, activities are permissible. You can have partnerships to establish a firm. You can have rental lending, and you can have permissible services as well. Uh, there's a query that some people say is that uh, rental uh, installment business is not permissible. No, this is not completely true. If you are if you are buying something, say I bought a mobile phone at fifty thousand rupees, and I want to sell it to someone, there are certain rules of sale that you need to follow. If I am the owner of that mobile phone, I have the risk of, and I have the ownership of that mobile phone. I can sell that mobile phone at a spot. For example, I can say that I am I am on, on my shop, and I I bought it for fifty thousand. I can sell it for sixty thousand, and I can take one in ten thousand rupees in one go. I can also say that I am selling it at 60,000, but I will take the payment in six installments of 10,000 each. So both are permissible. Mm -hmm. But the basic rule is that you have to lock the price today at day one. Then you can sell the sell the laptop or sell the mobile phone at installment. And if the customer, if the person delays, if the person delays, you cannot charge him extra. If you don't give money time, then you have paid the day one for 50,000 rupees. You cannot take extra amount in terms of the uh, price. Uh, you cannot take extra amount in terms of the uh, price. Next business elements ensuring all elements. Now, when when I when I I want to do a, I want to start a business. You want to start a business. हमें से कोई कारोबार करना चाहता है तो हमें क्या ensure करना है? We have to ensure that all all element of the business, including the product, the processes, even the human resource element, comply with the code of ethics uh, for which is required for sustainable growth and also for a profitable bottom line, but within the bound of Islamic law. Uh, there was a question, please guide. There, there are certain products that projects that are specified. We have to clone our design and functionality from a particular website. Uh, you know, if there's not a, if it, if it is not something very copyrighted, it's so just an open idea that, uh, for example, I have done this uh, seminar on entrepreneurship, and you you like some of the ideas from this slide, and you you also started a webinar on the same, uh, copying these examples. There's no issue, but if there's it's a copyrighted thing, if I and it's better you you give this mention the source. But if if it is something which is copyrighted, then without uh, using it without permission is problematic in some cases. 
Now, let's have some uh, examples of businesses. Uh, are they ethical? Are they not ethical? So let me just uh, throw some examples here. A cigarette or nicotine pouching manufacturing company, a tobacco manufacturing company, a conventional bank based on riba interest, a company who's selling lottery tickets, a mall in a stall where you have a spin, you know, for spin the wheel or fortune wheel where you spin, you pay $10 and then you uh, spin that uh, wheel and then at, at the result, uh, you may win a prize or you may lose that money. So will that business be permissible? No, so some uh, Mr. Naveed answered no. Yes, all of these businesses, maybe they are common in, uh, common to us. They are uh, widespread uh, across our surrounding, but they are not permissible because they are not qualifying into the ethical filter, which is, which is told, which is guided to us by Islamic law. Ethical directly prohibited, they are not ethical for the society, or they are not beneficial uh, 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 for the society. So they are creating more harm than benefit. So they are sometimes they are totally no-go area, and sometimes they are avoidable. They have to you have to avoid them because they are unethical. Abar, for example. No, none of these businesses that I mentioned are ethical in nature and as a result uh, uh, they are not Islamic in most of the cases and uh, so, so we need to be we need to be very careful as entrepreneur that when we select a business line to operate when we select a business line to operate so first we put a little time and think that the work is good or not is the product good or not is that business permissible is that product permissible is it not harmful for the society? It is it not uh, harmful for my uh, for the environment? If it is, and you have the ethical filters, you have the Sharia filters as well. Aap usme check kare. Maybe if you need, you consult some ex expert of, of of Islamic law that I want to start this business. I, I receive a query from time some time back uh, that some, there was a person who said I want to sell smuggled goods in Pakistan. I want to buy the smuggled goods from the smugglers because they are available in certain part of the city. And I want to sell those uh, goods in the market. Will that business be permissible? So what was your, what is your answer? Is that, can you do that I can sell smuggled goods in the bazaar? Mein? Then, so, then we need to assess what business we want to start. And then the broader the broader rule is if something is impermissible in the local law, or it is impermissible in in, in the original law, which is the Quran and Sunnah, then we should avoid that business. And for ethical business, we need to ensure that all of its dimensions are uh, within the bound of ethics, within it is within the permissible zone for us. In app purchases in a game uh, business like consume customer pay for ex generally if you for example if you are uh, you know if the game is it has no no impermissible directly impermissible element and if you are just uh, playing a game and uh, you are uh, buying some uh, products or you know like as you mentioned skins or extra benefit in the game if the overall business is if that if that overall game is permissible to play then such purchases are generally or normally are permissible to to obtain aap us tarah ki cheez khareed sakte hain agar overall business aapka uh, permissible hai wo, wo, overall game aapka ya jo app hai wo permissible hai now ab thoda sa aage badhte hain jab hum business ke elements ko dekhte hain ki what business elements uh, need to be uh, compliant what business element need to be compliant? So many scope chart I have broke, broken it into four aspects. Uh, main product, the financing side, the people side, and the marketing side. Now, coming to the main product, yes, I, that, 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 uh, that is, I mentioned that should not be forbidden by Islamic law. So there are certain very clear provisions. You cannot sell pork. You cannot sell alcohol. You cannot sell musical instruments in, in most of the cases. You cannot sell drugs, uh, which are like directly, which is used to, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a, which is uh, directly and proven to be harmful for the human health. 
so there are certain direct provisions similarly you cannot sell uh, something which are which is not and in your ownership you can you can't do short sell aap is tarah ki speculate nahi kar sakte you cannot sell lottery tickets you cannot sell products which is for example which has which has for example you you cannot sell shoes made up of pork skin aapne uska uske janwar ke yani pick ke जूते नहीं बेच सकते उसके बालों के बने हुए ब्रश नहीं बेच सकते सिमिलरली यू कैन नॉट सेल फूड प्रोडक्ट्स विच हैव विच आर नॉन हलाल इन नेचर फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई एम सेलिंग चिप्स और चॉकलेट्स बट आई नो देयर इज दिस अल्कोहल इन इट देयर इज एनी हराम इंग्रेडिएंट इज नोन टू बी इन दैट इन दैट फूड आइटम देन आई शुड अवॉइड सेलिंग दैट दोस आइटम सिमिलरली फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर इफ यू आर इफ यू हैव अ टॉय शॉप and you are selling certain toys which is uh, which are uh, uh, for example which are not according to uh, the islamic code for example uh, in islam there is there is a restriction on selling uh, idols you cannot sell those statues so if a toy is in a shape of a statue and it is uh, like a human figure so most of the scholars will disallow sale of those toys so we you need to we need to focus and select a product where which where you can which you can sell which is permissible for example i was uh, i someone asked me that uh, when we do drop shipping at amazon or when we sell at amazon uh, uh, on the in the online stores uh, uh, during the weekends uh, the the cork opener for wine bottle has a high demand yani wine bottle kholne ka jo cork opener hai sharab ki bottle kholne ka uski badi demand hai तो शेल आई सेल दैट प्रोडक्ट तो मेरे जवाब था नहीं आप नहीं बेचे ये प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज दैट प्रोडक्ट इज हैज अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक यूज वो वो हर चीज को हर उस हर जगह इस्तेमाल नहीं होती वो सिर्फ शराब की बोतल खोलने के लिए इस्तेमाल होती सो यू सही यू आर गेटिंग मोर मनी आउट ऑफ दैट बट मनी इज सेकेंडली यू नीड टू फर्स्ट सी वट आर यू सेलिंग एंड सेकेंडली डू नॉट सेल समथिंग विच इज हार्मफुल फॉर द सोसाइटी और फॉर द हेल्थ ऑफ सम or the consumer aap i am selling milk what i am doing i am polluting the milk with the with dirty water in it or i am just mixing water uh, uh, and as well as you know dirty water in it now it is not permissible to sell with after this uh, you know tampering or con- with this contamination i am selling a medicine but i know it is fake it's just uh, uh, it's just fake i cannot sell that medicine i know because it's a crime it's a sin to and you are playing with someone's health so lot of areas we need to first focus when we are selling or buying or selling a product uh, because we are then become we become responsible if i bought a wrong drug from your store it was a fake medicine and i have a uh, god forbid a heart problem and i took i took that medicine and i died god forbid then you will be held accountable it's an act of killing an innocent person so we have to be very careful whenever we are as a businessman as a entrepreneur we need to focus and think what products we are trying to sell uh, and there's a very uh, you know important this is a very important aspect people don't focus they just start selling something and then they even if you are selling a halal product they start contaminating it they are uh, start tampering it they are they display certain characteristics which is not present in the product so this is all deception so product has to be permissible then if it is permissible then you cannot contaminate it you cannot just mix it with the impurities jo hamare yahan hota hai milavat kar dete hain usme they are selling spices and then there there is some some uh, very harmful chemical included in that spice so this is not permissible uh, what is your what is your opinion about hawala and hundi business you see if if hawala and hundi business is against the law of land then the opinion of the scholars is that it is not permissible as a business if 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 doing it as a, yes i for example i live in uh, 
I live in Karachi. My brother live in Dubai. I went to Dubai. He said, take my $10,000 and give it to my mother. That's not, that is permissible because there's a personal transaction, a family transaction. But because the law of land disallows something, and if it is not disallowing something which is against the Islamic, uh, you know, court, then you, ha you have to respect the law. What is your opinion about selling earphones? So it's also important that, look, there are certain, uh, certain products which have dual uses, which has a permissible use and also an impermissible use. Uska jai istamal bhi, uska najai istamal bhi hai. scholars ka opinion ye hai ke, yes, if a product has a multi-purpose use and you're not sure that this person is using it for listening to the Qirat and doing a Zoom meeting or he's just doing it for something which is impermissible, then such products can be sold. However, the, uh, uh, you have to be more careful when you're selling this type of products and you have to also uh, think through that if you are selling a very specific uh, of that product, which is uh, uh, you know not used uh, for other than a, a, a impermissible element, then maybe you should avoid it. But as a general rule, uh, this this could be true for iPhone. This could be true for speakers. It could be true for laptop. It could be true for even screens. So things which have dual purpose, which can two two meanings be possible. Uh, generally, if the thing itself is sold, it can be So then you can buy and sell that product. Now, similarly, sometimes our like uh, Dr. Amjad has asked very valid question: If I am selling a T-shirt and there's a picture of a girl on it, is that permissible to sell? A khatoon ki tasvir bani hui ek shirt pe. So no, the answer is no. You should avoid these things. And and people and, and I was reading a hadith of the Prophet Islam that uh, if you have a printed picture or a statue, uh, in the, the, the meaning of that hadith is if you have a statue or a printed picture in your home, uh, probably the, the 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 angels of blessing will not come into your home. So this is important that we know by uh, what. what and also, it's also sometimes a disrespect. For so some time, we, we print, a, uh, for example, uh, let's say I, 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 I started a soap. And I, I say, I will print my picture on that soap wrapper. And after, whenever, when you buy that soap, what you will do? You will take the soap out and you will throw the picture in the, uh, that wrapper in the dustbin. So this is... Even if you have some male picture, it is a disrespect of humanity that a, a person face is a, is, a, is a respectable thing. You are not, and you will not like that your your uh, face or your picture is thrown to the uh, in the dustbin. So uh, this is also an aspect of respect of humanity, which Sharia also guides us that uh, do not uh, create such opportunities for others where a person is disrespecting a human human but uh, other human being. Now, coming to finance aspect, uh, yes, you will receive, you can receive the slide, you can uh, send, uh, this, this program is also uh, going going on the Facebook and uh, you can send our uh, colleagues the, the, the email uh, so we can share the slides with you. Now, coming to the financing aspect, I mentioned it briefly as well, all business need finance to operate and Islam uh, uh, has encouraged a person to do any you know, trading is encouraged in Islam. However, Islam has also put some conditions on how to obtain your financing. Islam has forbidden the use of exploitative methods of obtaining finance, uh, which is the most prevalent, pro you know, most prominent one is, is interest-based borrowing and interest-based lending for a businessman. Secondly, sometimes we have partnership. But sometimes this partnership go beyond the principles of Islam. A partner is saying, I'm investing a money in your business, but I want a fixed return. I will not share any loss. So if that type of partnership is being made, that is also uh, that will also contradict the Islamic principles. So, so to have finance, for example, normally when a startup company comes up, uh, the, the entrepreneur pool uh, his or her own money and then maybe borrow something from his father and his brother 
and then they start up. But when they then they then they grow, some more investors comes in. So you need to be uh, very careful that you can have investors in your business as a partner, but they have to share the profit and loss. And if you're borrowing someone money from someone, you're taking a loan from someone, it has to be interest free or use some Islamic mode of finance. For example, I want my business to have a car because I am doing a delivery business. So I, I don't want to take a loan. I, there was no one who will want to do partnership with me. I can take a car financing on Ijara on rental basis from Islamic bank. That is that is permissible. I And I will pay the regular rent to that bank. And he's not partner in my business because I don't want him to become my partner. I don't want anyone to interfere in my decision making. So it is permissible. But if you take an interest-based loan to even grow your business, that is also a no-go area. Now, third element is, is the people element. You know, most important aspect of a business is, is the human element. We, the, who, the person who runs the business, who, who runs your shop, who is sitting, who is selling, who is talking to the, person, the people. So the behavior and the attitude of the person is very important. If I am a salesperson, I am sitting on my shop, I am sitting on my shop and I am saying something. I am giving people a shock. I am saying, Chaap this mobile was... I bought it for 10,000. How can I sell it for 11? Or I, but I have bought it for even 5,000. So if I'm telling lie, I'm giving them fake reviews. I'm just telling something which is not present in the product. So I am, although I selected a halal business, but because of my staff or because of my own ignorance, I end up uh, in a wrong uh, you know, footing. I end up making my halal income impermissible by lying, by deceiving, by cheating. I said this is the this is the original model. However, that's a fake copy. So I am if I'm selling, I'm telling my to my customer that this watch is original. It's a real watch, and but it's a fake copy. Then I am lying and I am deceiving, and as a result, I am polluting my income. My income become impermissible for me for that product. So. The, the person you select for your business, there are a few areas. First, the, you have to select upright, honest persons who don't and tell them and teach them and train them. Do not lie, do not deceive. Train them about the basic skills of selling and purchase, basic, you know, uh, permissibility and prohibition of buying and selling. These are, these are uh, uh, you know, uh, there is a saying about Hazrat Umar that he do not allow a business person to operate in the markets of Medina unless that person knows the do's and don'ts of sale according to Islamic law. When the person does not know Islamic way of sale purchase, he does not know the do's and don'ts of sale according to Islamic law. So, he does not know the do's and don'ts of sale. So your responsibility jo hai, wo set ki hai. Wo meri, as a business owner hai, my all staff must be trained about the basic rights and basic responsibility that I am doing in that that uh, that is required to, to run that business. My salesman hire kar raho, pandra, so I need to train them about the right and wrong ways. Aake, kal unki wajah se, because of their mistake, my income does not become impermissible. So People element is important. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we have seen this element is also ignored. Sometimes even our entrepreneur do, we want a person who is very smart, actually who is over smart and who can deceive people. We need a person who can deceive people. This is not a criteria for an honest businessman. You are halal business, you are making your impermissible business impermissible because of, the, the, of this person who is a black sheep in your, in your, uh, in your employees. Uh, similarly, when the fourth element, which is all, again very important, is about marketing. In today's world, uh, marketing is essential to attract people. Market is essential to make yourself known, to promote your business, to increase your sale. Yes, there's no doubt in it. Marketing, promotion, advertisement, packaging, placement, this is all important. But there are certain ethics and codes for marketing as well. We need to be very clear that no deception, no lies, no fraud in the marketing. 
then we need to be ethical, uh, which is preferable. And, uh, and many scholars say it's mandatory that you don't use music in your marketing. You don't use uh, female uh, female as an object of to sale. And you have khawatin ko showpiece ke taur pe istemal na kare. Uh, si tarah aap uh, aisi baat aisi aise marketing slogan istemal na kare which are dual dual worded, which are deceiving person. You should not create unnecessary uh, uh, demand of something which is not. Uh, you know, you are not creating an unnecessary demand of a product. So. Marketing, and I will discuss marketing in further detail in the coming slide, but this is also important. The way you market, the message that you are giving, the visual that you are showing, uh, the and, and the place you are marketing your product. So all of them is important when you when it come to marketing uh, and selling and uh, and promoting your subject matter. And marketing, as, as probably you know, there are four Ps. Uh, or sometimes people say five P's, price, placement, product, promotion. So this uh, this all and the product itself, has, and so this has to be catered when you are uh, doing it. Uh, so, and also not no miss selling. You should not miss sell something. You should not. Uh, there's a hadith of the Prophet that 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 means that if you are selling something, if you if you have a product which has some defect in it, tell the defect to the person. Do not hide it. And he also there's a there's a uh, you know uh, there's a event when uh, the Prophet went to the, the market and he, he put uh, there was a uh, you know heap of wheat. Gandum ka dheer tha ya ajnas ka dheer tha. It was not it was not same which is any upper se kuchta and there kuchta. So Absalam Nesko Manakya. So the Prophet expressed his displeasure. And we 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 read we heard this from Ulama that this is a deception. We should be whatever we are selling, it has to be there. Otherwise, tell that just yes, my product has two benefit and there's one small defect. So I, I don't want to deceive you. You can you have so operate on full disclosures. Do not operate on the mechanics of deception. Now, certain rules of partnership when you when you enter into partnership, uh, because most of the entrepreneurs they when they start their business they don't go to Islamic finance or even other banks. They start partnership within friends and family. So there are four. Broader rules, there are more rules to it, but I just want to touch on the four rules that partnership means you are partnering in profit and loss with someone. So partner cannot fix a profit. They have to share the profit and business result with each other. So I, if I invest 10, 10 lakh rupees with my brother and he's, uh, he's also he also invested 10 lakh rupees and we are selling books in the market. So we we can say that okay because i work more and you just uh, you have just invested your money and i i work 8 hour in my shop as well so i will take 70% of the profit and you will take 30% of the profit or if we both work we can say we take 50 50% of the profit so we what we can do and agree that we will share the actual profit of the company but my brother cannot say that look i just want 20000 per month fixed I don't care whatever my, how much money you make. I just want twenty thousand. You make loss. It's your. You make profit. It's your. So it's not a partnership. It's it will become a loan. So it is not permissible then. Uh, and you cannot guarantee a partner cannot guarantee a fixed profit to other partner. Whether it's a venture capital firm, whether it's a uh, you know later on equity investor or someone who say I want partnership in your company, but I want a fixed return. That is against the principles of partnership. You have to agree a profit sharing ratio at the start of the business. Apnish profit sharing ratio tie karna hai shuru mein business ke. Ke bhai, is business mein kitna profit hoga? Kiska kitna? Agar if both are working partners, for example, my myself and my brother is a working partner and we have invested 1, 1 million rupees, we can agree on any profit sharing ratio because we are both working partners. But for example, my brother is a working, is, is a sleeping partner in the business. I am a working partner. He invested 50%, I invested 50%. And I work for eight hours. Then, as per Islamic law, my brother cannot demand profit more than 
but actually it has to be 50 or less than 50 because he has just invested the money and I am also working for the business. So does Islam also protect the right of the working partner and say that working partnership can has to be at least equal to the investment of the working partner or more than the, uh, more than the uh, investment share of the working partner because he also worked. So it, it is not allowed that a sleeping partner just exploit the working partner based on his investment. So these are the four broader rules that you, ha you have to, uh, you know, uh, remember when you uh, take uh, a business uh, partnership. Another question that comes that, uh, what is your view on equity market and capital market financing? Uh, dealing in a stock market is permissible provided you are investing in permissible shares. So you cannot invest in the shares of conventional banks, insurance companies, uh, uh, alcohol manufacturers, casinos, and other non-compliant businesses, then there are certain uh, filters that are subscribed by, uh, that are defined by scholars. For example, in Karachi Stock Exchange, you have Sharia compliant indexes. So you should invest and restrict your investment in, in only to the Sharia compliant companies. Then the method of investment is also important. You cannot do short sell, you cannot do uh, future sell, you cannot do forward sell. You have to comply the rules of Islamic trading in terms of when you invest in the stock market. Uh, so that is, and inshallah, we, we, we are having another seminar on investing on stock market next week. So you can stay tuned and uh, we have a good speaker for that seminar as well. Another question that is uh, a good question by asked by some of the some participants is that uh, what is the uh, rate of profit allowed in Islam? You see, Islam does not prescribe any any predetermined or uh, percentage of profit. For example, if I bought this uh, uh, like headphone for hundred rupees, I can sell it for hundred and fifty rupees. I can sell it for two hundred rupees, and I can sell it for hundred and ten rupees. There is no percentage profit prescribed by Islam that 10% is good or 100% is very bad. No, there is no limit, upper or lower limit on the profit. However, what Islam says that you leave this to market forces. If I'm selling something over expensive, people will not buy from me. If I'm selling it too low, maybe I will become out of business very soon. My business is out of But Islam what Islam says, do not deceive someone. For example, if I'm selling this mouse, which is a 500 rupee, uh, you know, device, and I sell it for 1000 rupees, and I sell, I ask, I told my customer, this is the market price. I'm not selling you at high price. This is the market, very fair market price. Then it is wrong because you're saying this, the price of the mouse is 500 rupees. And I'm saying it that 1000 is the market price. Or I say, I deceive my customer and said, and said to him, I bought it for 900 rupees. Although I bought it for 300 rupees. So this is this is wrong. But as a, as a general rule, there is no, no uh, capping on the profit. There is no limit of, of on the profit. However, in case of lifeline item, if you are holding something, gandum, ko, chawal, ko, or logon ko shortage, there is a shortage in the market and you are holding that amount, uh, that commodity, so the, the price will go up and I will sell it at a higher price. This is wrong. Lifeline item may, agar ap, you are holding something and then you are trying to, to exploit common men, that is impermissible. That is wrong. So even you're selling a permissible product, but your method of selling make it impermissible. The way you sell is, is no go area. Yeah, this is another question. I'm, I'm involved in servicing, uh, you know, in writing and helping uh, assignment for the students. Ask your, ask your own heart. Is it not cheating? Is it not uh, deception? That uh, if I am doing a degree uh, from uh, LUMS and I say I have to write a master thesis and it is my responsibility to write that thesis. But I engage someone and I paid him 10,000 that you write it for me. And I present it to my teacher that as it is written by me it is again it is a way totally wrong yes 
what you can do you can help ask someone to assist you help you and maybe you know teach you guide you do some market data research for you and then you also acknowledge that person that yes i have did in my analysis but i took help from pipe and this is this is okay in the academic world as well but the the occupation of fake assignments and writing assignment for someone who has not written the assignment is not a permissible uh, thing uh, and uh, let me just we just move my phone and I, maybe i'll answer some of the question you i will get you will get the answer as we move along so coming to the main product what does your business do what goods and service do you provide so as as uh, as one of our, our uh, participant mentioned that if I write assignment for someone and I, I, it's a fake, like I'm just, it's, it's like deceiving someone. So it's not allowed. Similarly, if I write fake reviews for a product, it is also not allowed. Uh, someone uh, just asked me that uh, we have to, uh, in today's world, we have some companies who are selling, who are giving us online trading account to deal in Forex futures and uh, commodities. Most of those forex futures and commodity trading is not allowed because there is no commodity itself which is being bought and sold. The commodities are, are never deliverable. And in case of uh, uh, some platforms, it's a future and forward transaction. And there is no real commodity and you're operating on margin. So most of these FX trade business or commodity trade business which is software pe platforms hai, Zadatar ye impermissible hai. There is there's a there is a, you know possibility to make it permissible if you do a real trade, take the delivery, take the ownership of some asset. And for example, I I know that if the dollar is going up, so I bought thousand dollars and put it in my bank, and after one month the dollar price goes two rupees up, and I sell it set the physical dollar in the market. Uh, that is okay. But if you are doing a trade where you're not taking delivery there is no possession there is no even actual sale happening yes operating on margins and in, in which has happened normally in terms of commodities that you in pakistan you are just going on this on, on that app and you're buying a thousand barrel of uh, or a hundred barrel of oil from new york market which is never to be delivered so that type of trade is also impermissible now Coming to businesses, uh, let's again, I've discussed it. Some of them are, which are not allowed. Again, if you have to consider the Islamic law of what is allowed, gambling, casinos, bars, pubs, entertainment activities that are not permissible in Islam, that is also not allowed, like uh, cinemas, and we're just, just showing uh, movies, which is not, uh, again, again according to ethics, uh, selling uh, tobacco, uh, shisha. Uh, yes, there are, there's a different opinion about selling tobaccos, but it is, even if it is allowed by some scholars, it is always disliked. No one will say that uh, uh, having, uh, you know, uh, smoking is good for your health. So it is at least unethical as well. Then you have to be careful when you are, uh, uh, you know, in certain type of more different business, like if you are doing photography, you are making filmmaking, you are doing event management, uh, you're opening account, you have, there are permissible areas to operate and there are impermissible areas to operate. If you are an event manager, you are uh, organizing corporate events, conferences, seminars, workshops, trainings. Yes, seems permissible. If you are uh, organizing uh, concerts only, then you need to think to yourself that is it permissible to earn uh, uh, in that way? So what extent ethics can be influenced by culture or geographical diversities? Can ethical decision be codified in absolute term or it's a relative? You see, uh, for us, the matter is very easy. Uh, first, our first guideline for ethics is, is our religion. So if it's something is, is impermissible in Islam, it is automatically highly unethical. So interest taking is impermissible. So it's, it's unethical. It's a crime. Similarly, selling alcohol is unethical. It is a sin. Gambling is unethical. It is a crime. It's a sin. It is uh, so. We, we for us, it's the 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 Islamic guidelines are very clear and guide us on the un, on the un, unethical part. But there are certain things as well which can be influenced uh, by the culture or which are not 
uh, there in the pre in the past, but they are now uh, in the in the society. Then we need to evaluate according to the principles. For example, uh, you know, uh, again as I mentioned, uh, uh, online betting was not there. Gambling was prohibited, but online betting is a new form of gambling. So it is also prohibited because it is also unethical because it was not uh, it was not uh, it, it contradict the rules. Uh, uh, designing a uh, uh, you know a brochure uh, with a with a female uh, uh, element in it for a casino is an ethical. Although you can say I'm just designing it, I'm not selling. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, you know involved in the gambling itself, or I'm not selling alcohol. But I'm just designing a brochure for them. That is also unethical. So for us, the matter is quite easy, and we know that for Islam has proper guidelines, and also uh, when new elements come. Then the the the, the culture uh, cultural norms and the religious uh, you know norms can be used to uh, to further define the new development in the society. Are they ethical or are they not ethical? Now financing every business need finance as my as I mentioned and earlier to uh, money to operate and, and so uh, so where you are getting your financing from? That's important. Important guideline for financing, interest is prohibited as we you know, as it's not only prohibited, prohibited for Muslims, all the Abrahamic religion prohibit taking and giving of interest. Uh, it's prohibited in Judaism, it's pro prohibited in Christianity, it is, it is definitely prohibited in Islam for Muslims. And the Prophet said, uh, has cursed the acceptor of interest, the payer of it, the one who records it and the one who witnessed the transaction and said they are all alike in the guilt. Uh, when you're selling or buying something or you're giving something on rent, the price must be known. The price has to be fixed. So you know the, the both parties know and agree on a certain price. Uh, if you want to take, uh, you know, loan from an Islamic point of view, the non-commercial element. You can take loan, you can give loan, but it has to be interest-free. Karza le sakte de sakte, but usko interest-free hona chahiye. Islam does not classify interest as a commercial uh, loan as a commercial transaction. You cannot take, enter, or in, you cannot operate in the business of lending money to others on interest. There are people or the companies who provide interest-based loan in, in, in the informal sector. That is that is an impermissible business. Uh, taking them loan from them is also impermissible. And having that business is also impermissible. So if you're an entrepreneur, you don't you should not go to those uh, money lenders who lend money on interest, whether they are banks or they are private money lenders. Both is impermissible. Yes, if give, someone is giving you interest-free loan, you can take it. Yes, you, what, what you can do if you need financing, you can use Islamic mode of financing. If there, there are sale-based mode like Murabaha, or there are rental based mode like Ijara, there are partnership based mode. So, Islamic finance institutions use those Islamic mode of finance to provide financing to for your genuine needs. So, you can explore those modes, or even if you can uh, have uh, with someone in the family uh, who can who say, okay, okay, I will I will give you my car on rent. So, you just use my car and buy, can you give me a rent? So, that is permissible, but you can't go for an interest based financing. Similarly, if you have surplus fund in the business, there's a, there's a saving that you have accumulated by earning profit. You need to ensure that this funding is not invested in a, in a, in a, in a non compliant avenue. You have to interest based bank. You invested in the stock market by using a wrong method. You invested in a in a non-compliant mutual fund. Yes, you have to ensure that whatever you invest your surplus capital, it has to be Sharia compliant. And today, most of the scholars say even keeping a current account in a conventional bank is also not good. Because either you are, you are although you are not sometimes taking interest directly, you are supporting the system of interest. And now in, in nowadays, many conventional bank current account have certain features, certain free services linked to the current account balance that also make it like riba or interest. Now let's see uh, some of the questions. Uh,
uh, what if I I bought something uh, from the from the market and thought it was genuine? Then I I later sell it to some some of my customer, and then when the customer came came back to me and said this is a fake product. So if you have told this customer that this was a genuine product, and then you later find out that it was a fake product, then it is it is that it is it is you should return that product to you. Then you should take that product back and give the money back, and then go and ask that supplier that you have sold him the fake product. Because it's, it's, you you have to ensure and you have to be you have to act ethically as well in the market. Now, uh, further let's explore marketing. Uh, a few aspects of marketing. Then I will come back to the questions. Uh, marketing to optimize your reputation. Uh, the, you know, I, I I as mentioned earlier, marketing is important in today's world. Uh, you have to create awareness, you have to reach people, you have to build your business, you have to increase your sale, but you have to be honest and upfront and transparent and add real value to the product. Uh, that the term of ethical marketing has few dimensions that you have sincerity, you want long-term growth, you want to market, but sensibly in the right manner. You have a certain sense of responsibility and ethics, and you also have the care for the environment because today in today's world, हम ये बात करते हैं कि ये सस्टेनेबल होना चाहिए एनवायरमेंटल फ्रेंडली होना चाहिए हमारी मार्केटिंग को सो यू आल्सो आल्सो नीड टू टेक केयर ऑफ दैट एस्पेक्ट नाउ लेट्स हैव क्विकली डिस्क्लेयर द सी फोर पीस ऑफ मार्केटिंग आई मेंशन द प्रोडक्ट अह इफ यू आर इफ यू आर मार्केटिंग अ प्रोडक्ट देन एंड इफ इफ द प्रोडक्ट हैज सर्टेन डिफेक्ट और सर्टेन यू नो हार्मफुल इफेक्ट और इट इज नॉट गुड फॉर सर्टेन टाइप ऑफ कस्टमर्स then you need to mention that this product has say like in 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 the west you have seen that this product contain nuts or it can create allergy for those who are not uh, who are not comfortable of consuming nuts and uh, does the product solve any actual need the quality that you are promising is there in the product for example you are saying this product contain uh, four elements i am selling you this uh, uh, you know this shampoo and it has honey it has coconut it has this and this but there is nothing inside i'm selling a real fruit juice but uh, the labels i or i'm my i'm claiming it's a real fruit juice but it has 70% water 20% sugar 10% uh, artificial taste and probably 0% real fruit so ye aapne dhoka diya hai you you have to ensure that whatever is mentioned or what you have whatever you claim about the product is there inside the product हमारे कई दफा लिखा होता है जी खालिश दूध मिल रहा है उसमें आधा पानी मिला हुआ होता है सो इट यू आर मेकिंग योर परमिसिबल बिजनेस इन परमिसिबल देन पैकेजिंग पे आ जाए इज द बार कोड प्रोडक्ट लाइसिंग एक्सपायरी डेट करेक्ट इट इज अवेलेबल इफ द प्रोडक्ट इज समथिंग व्हिच हैज अ शेल्फ लाइफ देन यू नीड टू बी दैट सिकल वेज टू टेल द पर्सन दैट दिस इज द शेल्फ लाइफ डू नॉट यूज इट आफ्टरवर्ड बिकॉज़ इट कैन हार्म यू Uh, if you're using human pictures, uh, uh, the living pictures, as I mentioned, uh, for, uh, from an Islamic point of view, it is not permissible. Secondly, from even respect of humanity point of view, it is not per. It is not good. That you are. Will you like that your father or mother picture is in, on some product and it is then uh, you know thrown in the dustbin and it goes in the in the gutter? No. So why should we allow and why should we allow this disgrace of humanity? uh then if you made uh, you are mentioning the actual weight you are saying this is 1 kg and it is actually 950 grams this is also wrong the 50 g maybe you, the price the 50 you know uh, 5% of the price component that you have charged from the customer is not permissible for you because you are you are deceiving him in terms of price you have to be upfront and clear no hidden charges clear break, break up should be given uh If you're selling, if you're saying it's market price, then it has to be market price. Uh, and sometimes we see this deception happening that the product is for thousand rupees. Then you say it's on sale, and the sale is a fifty percent sale. And what have you done that you have tempered the label and make it two thousand and and then a fifty percent sale on it? So thousand rupee ki product ko sale se pehle thousand rupee ki diya. Apne usko two thousand rupee ki kiya ya fifteen thousand rupee ki kiya aur fifty percent sale ka label laga diya. it is deception ye kya kiya aapne dhoka diya you have deceived the customer then promotion how you sell the product and unfortunately our society has gone very low in this 
हमने प्रमोशन को समझ लिया कि नाच गाना यू नो यूजिंग वुमेन एज अ शो पीस इज द वे टू टेलिंग लाइज Uh, you know, having fake celebrity, you know, celebrities giving fake reviews is is the way to sell the product. It's not the right way, not the ethical way, not the moral way of selling a product. Uh, you need if you are if you you what what when you are promoting, you are giving a Facebook ad, a YouTube ad, or a print ad, or a media ad. You need to have a clarity that you have to tell but truth. You should not deceive someone. Uh, you should not just use. Uh, Uh, unnecessary, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you should not use, uh, especially female as a showpiece. Uh, you should not misguide the user by having fake reviews by celebrities or uh, sports players who are not. For example, I'm selling a shampoo, and I'm I got a very known footballer or a or a cricketer that he says I use this product, but he himself is not using it. And I'm giving a wrong impression that this person has long hair because he used my shampoo. So this is fake. So you need to be careful about it. So there are some ethical principles of marketing: advertise but do not sensitize. Uh, you know, do not just create unnecessary buzz of something which is not there in the product. If it is there, yes, you can publicize it. You can make it uh, known to the consumer, but do not promote something which is not there. Uh, if there are certain government rules, follow those, comply those rules, uh, because the Sharia says that if any order of the of the of any land order of the land or the law of land It does not contradict with Islamic law. A Muslim trader must follow that that rule. Uh, do not use uh, you know misleading ads, uh, which is which is uh, you know giving a wrong impression, which is giving a wrong image, which is not there in the product, or which is the, not the right method of giving that ad. So, you have to promotion. Me, keep in mind. Unnecessary. You have to use it. 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 now to be an honest and successful entrepreneur few rules you to be be honest and fair in your trading follow the footstep of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is sadiq be trustworthy follow the footstep again of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is amin the business must be halal in nature the product has to be halal the way it is conducted has to be halal try that you are solving a real problem of someone Uh, you are adding value to the person because that will make your business grow in long term make it make people like it people will refer it because you are providing real value you are not deceiving someone you are not uh, you know cheating someone follow ethical rules for marketing take care of your employee and train your employees and ask them to be upfront and truthful do not train them to become cheaters unko bataye ki bhi aapne sach bolna hai aur sahi tarike se kaam karna hai and take care of the environment so if do not sell something would not sell something aap to apni factory mein bana rahe hain lekin apne piche jo apne jo waste nikala hai usse puri puri abadi bimar ho rahi hai pura pura aapka jo the harmful chemical that is emitting out of your factory and your company is creating another issues and hundred of people are getting sick that is also not permissible so you and you will, we will be accountable for that uh, uh, and so islam ek law and islamic ethics they, they teach us that we should not harm even there is a hadith of the prophet sallam that if you remove some obstacle from the way that is sadqa so how how so removing an obstacle is a sadqa an act of ibadat but what about the person who is, who is creating an obstacle for others who is creating harmful for so harmful effect for others that is also then it means it is, that will be a crime or a sin now again some examples uh, i just mentioned there people were some of the examples that Uh, people have uh, people hire people to uh, you know to have fake clicks uh, watching uh, videos which are not even ethical and then you earn money from them then there's multi level marketing the one person uh, you know get 10 other person to sell something which is even not existing or not real and these ponzi schemes are there then uh, you're earning through google ads but again those ads are not permissible in some in, in nature you have to be very careful how you are earning what type of uh, what type of uh, you know videos your ad is showing and what type of ad you are uh, showing it to the public or what, what type of ad is used to earn money so i'm not saying this uh, some, some of the uh, ad element will be permissible but you have to be careful about it uh, you know using those uh, chance games winning uh, you know like uh, There, there are certain games where you you have you just gamble and then you win. Uh, 
providing editing services as a freelancer for a music video for a dance video using a, a woman as a showpiece as a model and then uh, you know that type of earning because there's a hadith of the prophet system that says uh, that the earning of a person who draws figures human figures is not permissible earning through forex trade which does not comply with the islamic uh, you know ethics of trade writing fake reviews that's also telling lie and you cannot make your earning permissible by telling lie there's a, a golden word by the, uh, of customer service which is taught to us by islam and is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam related by hazrat anas bin malik radhiyallahu the prophet stated none of you will have faith unless he loves for his brother what he loves for himself so this is a golden rule for marketing and businessman if you're selling something if you're doing some business if you're selling some product make sure that that is the same that you love for example if you are selling a polluted milk will you ask your 3 year daughter to drink that milk if no then do not sell it to anyone else daughter that is again a serious sin and a crime so when I, as and this as a, in in the banking profession any profession if you are a seller you are selling something if you don't if you don't like that someone deceives you so you should not deceive anyone else that is uh, i think the broader principle now let me come to the some queries uh, that are there in the in the chat box uh, and let's see i have answered some of the questions uh, the for example people demand from bank a fresh currency note and this uh, Again, this is this is a, a demanding fresh currency note as per se is not wrong. You, you can use that currency note to give ED. But if you are selling the currency note at 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 a thousand rupee, uh, you know, uh, uh, is is sold at hundred and thousand and uh, eleven hundred rupees, that is riba because you cannot sell same currency at a different denomination. So that that is wrong. Uh, in, in in these days, forex trade is as on trend and is this trading ethical i mentioned that forex trading most of the forex trading platform are impermissible galat tarike se kaam kar rahe. Uh, and yes you can have you can involve in the right manner in forex trading where you actually buy a currency it is there in your account then you sell it at, at after some time and buy uh, so because islam says it is allowed that i can buy uh, i can sell a dollar at 180 rupees and i can buy one dollar for 180 rupees this is allowed similarly i can buy gold i can buy silver and if the value appreciate or depreciate i can make money and i can lose money but there has to be a physical some type of possession either this currency come to my account gold come to my vault and i can sell and i can then or i can store it so it, it is permissible but many modern platforms which just operate on a marginal trading model are impermissible and you need to further investigate before you join or use that platform earning from youtube is ethical because there is advertisement payment advertisement may be like song movies and again here you need to be careful if you are if first thing the content has to be permissible so if i am uh, you know uploading a dance video of a if of, of a female uh, that whether the ad advertisement is wrong or right this earning is not right. Many of us, uh, we have seen that many of people on the TikTok, they are just uploading their pictures, which is not permissible to even upload. And then they're earning that money. So they, that that earning is not permissible. Uh, so first is the content has to be ethical and permissible according to Islamic law. Then you have to see where, what type of ads are coming on your video. So if uh, and then if there's a 10% ads are unethical, then it is better that you you part away 10% of your income and give it with uh, as charity without the intention of swap. Salary for partner. What about salary for partner despite equity? If the person uh, is an equity holder, but is also working for a company in a capacity, not just because he's a partner, he's, a ta he's taking salary, he's working for some in a, in a capacity, then salary can be taken, but that has to be an independent contract. Uh, formally, not, normally, like we have in, the, in a private limited company, all shareholders uh, have, uh, have invested as, as a shareholder, they share equally in dividend, but some of them also 
work. So they have two contracts. One is a, the salary contract and the other is the partnership contract. But you have to be, there are more details to it and it's better, you know, like take your situation to someone and, and understand. Can an Islamic bank provide financing to a brokerage house for maintaining margin with, with clearing house? Uh, generally, brokerage house, you have to see because many brokerage house are not, are, are not doing Sharia compliant businesses. If they're doing Sharia compliant businesses, then some work, some make mechanism can be worked out. Can a 100 rupee product be, be sold at 1000 rupees? Yes, it can be sold at 1000 rupees, but there should be no deception. For example, if I got... Uh, the Himalayan salt, like the Pakistan mein salt, hota hai, jo se nikalta hai. Uh, ko, uh, hai, paas jo gold uh, salt mines hai, Khevda pe. Wo rupe ka ek kilo milta hai Pakistan mein. But if you go to Australia, I bought that 100 gram at $10, I think $5. So, aap bech sakte hai, aap uski value add karke maa bech sakte hai, provide not, you're not deceiving someone. So, ye, ishme, koi Islam ne koi pabandi nahi lagai bhi, but dhoka nahi de sakte hai. Uh, earning from YouTube is ethical because there is advertisement payment. Just uh, like I told you, YouTube ka ho gaya. Uh, holding a particular currency with intent that it will raise in value. Yes, it's not a matter of money. If I bought a dollar, I think that the dollar will go up. I have a physical dollar. I have a 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 dollar. I have even I can buy, I can buy gold, I can buy silver, but I have to take possession. I, it has to be there. I, I am taking a risk. It is, it is not, it is, there's no issue in it. So buying and selling of, but there are certain rules of buying and selling currency. You have to follow that. Uh, what is your opinion on Bitcoin? This is a, this is a detailed subject. Most of the scholars in, in Pakistan, they, they, they say avoid this currency because currently they are more speculative in nature. Uh, but they, there are more details to it. But uh, today our topic is not uh, on that side. So we will, will not go further to that. Uh, is normal home mortgage permissible by any means? Uh, no, interest-based home mortgage is not permissible. Uh, uh, you can go for Islamic uh, home mortgage or you can, uh, you know, uh, maybe you can ask them to have a co joint co equity co-ownership program, something like that, that is permissible. But interest-based loan as, as a general rule, interest-based mortgage is not permissible as a general rule. Uh, in that, in this contemporary world, operating on cutthroat competition mechanism, hostile takeover, a common for example, where relatively is limited resource market players take have to leave arena to stronger corporate. So, up to what extent competition is? The Islam, Islam does not uh, have uh, Islam does Islam actually encourages market com market forces and market competition. But yes, uh, in if some uh, large monopoly. But also, on the other hand, Islam also don't encourage monopolies. So if a large monopoly is coming up and he's destroying the small traders, then the, the, the ruler it has the right to intervene and, uh, and you know, uh, have certain rules where the small traders and small businessmen are, are protected. So, and, and there's no harm in it, but it is the responsibility of the, of the, of the ruler of that area to, to intervene. But uh, uh, from the Islamic point of view, Islam normally thinks on, on a win-win situation. I, I, I just saw, an, uh, uh, you know, there was a, I, I saw this example that uh, uh, there was a superstore and a new, uh, you know, uh, there, was a, there was a market, there was a, you know, a grocery shop and a new grocery shop was opened in that area. So the, that the Muslim owner of the shop closed down the, his, or her, her, his shop for a day. And he mentioned that today my shop is closed. My neighbor has opened another new shop. Please go and buy from him because I also want uh, to, to help him. So this is, the, this is another sign of how uh, ethical a Muslim trader should believe. And we should have a firm belief that risk is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one, no competition, no corporate can take the risk that was that is destined to me. So, but if you have this uh, belief, then you will 
uh, not uh, go in that type of cutthroat competition. But if you are suffering from that competition, you can uh, you can approach the regulator or the ruler or the you know the the regulator the, the maybe the kazi of that area that then he or she can, they can intervene. If a taxi driver takes a ride and the rider is a conventional bank employee, the driver knows that he is doing job in bank. How whether uh, whether is uh, this money is uh, you know if uh, normally in this case uh, generally uh, a taxi driver is not uh, not uh, you know obliged to investigate about the source of income of the of the person who is traveling in the, his or her taxi, uh, and if that is the case, then uh, there is no harm in it. But if uh, and if, if he knows he's a taxi he's a he's, he's a he's a uh, you know bank employee, but there's a possibility that he has some other source of income as well. Then even scholars allow it. But if he specifically mentioned I am paying you this fare out of interest, then uh, it's better to consult some expert. That what expert has to be done in that particular case. And, uh, and and I think we should develop this habit that when we have this problem, we should go and to uh, qualified scholars and, and discuss. And maybe then he, based on the situation, can advise you what is the best uh, method, method for you. And app can have Google AdSense enabled and owner does not have control over the ads allowed to display in that, uh, uh, is that earning halal? Again, if I, I will say that if it also depends on the nature of ad that are coming. If the ad is coming for a, for a biscuit, for a, you know, for apparel, there's no harm in that ad. But if the ad is of coming of, 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 for alcohol or a gambling or a betting, online betting or, a, or on a, or an unethical website, then that percentage ad may be, you know, you have to, it's better if you, you know, calculate and then you part away for that type of income. That means I think earning from a company involved in wrong or digital marketing. Yes, if a company is directly involved in, you know, deceiving, fake marketing, selling fake products or lying to the customers and you're part of that selling team, then you need to, you need to reassess it. And you go and I, I ask some experts. I think uh, we there are uh, uh, a lot of questions. Some other questions are coming up, uh, but we uh, we have reached uh, you know the permitted time frame for our session. Uh, we are actually five minutes above our permitted time, so I just like to conclude the session here. Uh, that entrepreneurship is important. It is uh, you know it can fuel the economic growth. Uh, the, the the you know nine portion of the risk is 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 a promise to the traders and businessmen if uh, but if they are honest they are upfront they are trustworthy then their business is act of ibadat if they are cheating they are lying they are uh, you know deceiving their business will become an act of problem for them so we need to it is important that we learn the rules of uh, that we learn the ethics of doing business we learn the rules of doing business we follow the sharia code uh, in terms of product pricing ma marketing packaging people and other aspect of entrepreneurship and ensure that we are uh, operating in a in a safe zone if we do that inshallah our business uh, will have barka with a, with a blessing from the worldly point of view we have the credibility we have the growth inshallah and from the from the, the other world point of view we are also whenever we are earning a halal income and if a person is you know engaged in halal earning halal income for his family for himself for his parents that is an act of ibadat as well so with these words i i, I thank you all for joining us today I, I'm, I hope that uh, this you have found this session beneficial for you. And uh, inshallah, we will uh, we, IBSC uh, organize uh, similar sessions regularly. So you can uh, come, uh, you can also join us our, in our, our sessions. Uh, uh, I, we will try to post these slides uh, or the link of the slides on the uh, uh, Facebook of IBSC, if you can download them, and I will ask my team as well that those who have registered for the session, we can also share the slides with them. So, Jazakallah Khair. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. May Allah accept our effort, your time for coming here today. So, thank you very much, and Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.